Hello ladies and gents and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you guys how to jailbreak and install a bunch of applications on your iOS 5 and iOS 6 devices. So we're not going to use this one because this has already been jailbroken and installed. What we're going to use today is two devices. We've got an iPhone 3GS here running iOS 6.1.6 .6, and we have an iPod Touch 3rd generation which is running iOS 5.1.1. .1. Now this should work on any iOS 5, iOS 6 device. I've tested this on an iPad 1st gen and an iPad 2nd gen as well as an iPhone 4S. So with that said, we're going to be using a MacBook today. Specifically, this is a late 2013 MacBook Pro with Retina display. And of course, we need a 30 pin to USB cable. You'll use a lightning cable if you have one of the newer iPod Touches or an iPad 4th Gen or iPhone 5S. Sorry, iPhone 5. So let's begin. First things first, we want to open a web browser. I've had more success using Google Chrome for whatever reason, but we're going to type in Legacy iOS Kit. And it should be the first result. It's going to be a GitHub link. We will open that and scroll down just a little bit until we see releases over here with the green latest button. Click on that and scroll down. So we want this version right here for Mac OS. We will click to download that. Once it's finished, we are gonna open it. If, it's, if Google Chrome is blocking it, click keep and then you can open it. We're done with the internet browser for now so we can close that. Once that finishes, we're gonna drag this legacy iOS kit folder onto the desktop because we're gonna be using it quite frequently. So now we're gonna plug in our first device. I'm gonna do the iPod Touch third gen because iOS 5 is a little more involved for the jailbreak. If you have an iOS 6 device, you can skip ahead in the video to when I start working on the 3GS. So we've got our iPod plugged in now we're going to want to open a terminal window. So for most of us, that's going to be inside of Launchpad in this folder labeled Other. Click on that and find a terminal. With our terminal window open, the next step is going to be to open our legacy iOS kit folder. In here, you're going to find a file called restore.sh. This is going to be the file we use very frequently. We're going to take that, drag it into terminal, click on terminal so the window is selected, and click Enter. Terminal is going to ask you if, if it's allowed to access folders in your desktop. Click OK for that. And you're going to get this window if this is the first time opening Legacy iOS Kit. Don't worry about it. Click Cancel and Cancel again. Now, Legacy iOS Kit is asking if it can install dependencies and set up for permission to use certain tools. We do want that. So we're going to click Enter. And then we're going to type in the computer password and click Enter again. So once again, if this is your first time using Legacy iOS Kit, you're going to get this pop-up. You're going to want to click Install and Agree and Continue on Battery Power if you're not plugged in using a laptop. Now, initially, this is going to say that there is a lot of time remaining for the software, but that should go down unless you have abysmal internet. So you're going to let that download, and once it finishes, we will continue. Okay, the software has installed, and that took quite some time, probably 15 to 20 minutes. I think it has to do with how fast your computer is or how slow the server is that the software is being downloaded from. But now we should have everything in place to begin the jailbreak. Once again, we're doing this on the iOS 5 device because it takes longer. So with our device plugged in, once again, we're going to drag restore.sh into terminal and click enter. It should find our device. And we can type the number two and click enter. So this is just giving us a warning and that is okay. We're going to click enter again. And now the jailbreak is starting. So like I said, for iOS 5, this takes quite some time. So I'm going to speed up parts of this. So you'll just have to pause the video until yours finishes. You can see the iPod says restore in progress and now it says restore complete and it's going to reboot. 
Okay, once you reach this point where it says to continue, please run the Gilbert JB, what you wanna do is unlock your iPod if it's not already, and you're gonna see this little icon here. You're gonna click it, and it's gonna do just like that, and you should get a message here on the screen that the jailbreak is continuing. So we're gonna keep letting it do its thing here. Eventually we're gonna to have to, I believe, we're gonna click that one more time before we are completely done with this jailbreak. And I spoke too soon, I think we are finished. The device is rebooting now. If you see this, save terminal output now if needed, that means that the terminal window has finished doing whatever it needs to do. In our case, it has finished with the jailbreak. So the iPod rebooted a couple times and now it shows a progress bar. You're just gonna let it sit there until it finishes. I don't think it has to stay plugged in, but I just don't want it to die in the middle of this process. And that progress bar moved pretty quick there. And it sounds like we are back at the lock screen. Now we can slide to unlock once it lets us. And we should see Cydia, there we go. Even if it doesn't have the actual icon, that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and click on it and let it run and do its thing. So while that's working, I'm gonna go ahead and begin the jailbreak on iOS 6. So if you have iOS 5, you can go ahead and skip this next part. But if you're here for iOS 6, the time is now. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your iOS 6 device and connect it to the Mac. Just like so, make sure that it's plugged in and charging. And you're gonna find the restore.sh file inside your legacy iOS kit folder. You're gonna drag that into a terminal window. Make sure there's nothing running in that terminal window. Then you're gonna click enter and you should see this script run. Now, what do we wanna do? We want jailbreak. So we're gonna type the number two and click enter. This is a warning that jailbreaking may cost you your data. Click enter again to continue. Now the software is running the jailbreak. Okay, so now the device needs to be in recovery mode before proceeding. Do you want to send the device to recovery mode? The answer is yes. So we're gonna type Y, click enter. iPhone should shut off and we should see the connect to iTunes logo here in just a moment. There we go. Now we have to enter DFU mode. So unlike the iOS 5 jailbreak, we actually have to enter DFU mode here on the iPhone or iPad or iPod, whichever you have that runs iOS 6. So we're gonna type Y and click enter. You're gonna see prompts on how to do that. So three, two, one, hold the home button and the power button for 10 seconds and you can see the countdown there on the screen. iPhone's gonna go black and once that stops, you're gonna let go of the power button but keep holding the home button. And we see the Apple logo, that means I did it incorrectly. So, gonna have to try that one more time. Okay, this time it worked because iTunes has opened, noting that there is an iPhone in recovery mode connected. So, if you have that problem, you will once again drag restore.sh to Finder and click Enter. Then, we're gonna click two for jailbreak. Now we have to enter our current version of iOS. So for my case, that's 6.1.6. .6. And yes, we'll click enter again. Now, this is where you'll be if you did not fail DFU mode the first time like I did. So this should be the same for both um, parties of people here. Now, I've always had success with number one, so that's what I'm gonna do. Type the number one and click enter. And the jailbreak should run, there's a chance that's gonna give us an error and I will show you how to fix that if it does. But if not, then I will not show you. And it appears to be running just fine, you're gonna let it do its thing. All right, and once you see this purple save terminal output now if needed message, that means that this program has finished. We can go ahead and close that. And we are done for now with the computer. You can disconnect and we're gonna close the MacBook. We will come back to this for one of the methods of adding applications to our devices. All right, we have two jailbroken devices here. 
iOS 6 here on the left with the 3GS, iOS 5 here on the right with the iPod Touch 3rd Gen. If you don't see Cydia at first, don't be alarmed. Give it a minute, just like I had to do there, and it should pop up. So we're going to open Cydia on both of these devices and let them load for the first time here. Real quick, if you get this message here, check your date and time. This says 7.57, but it is actually 4.02, so make sure your date and time are correct. All right, now that we have both our devices jailbroken and Cydia is working, first thing we're going to do is add a source. I will put that right here on top of the MacBook, but you can also watch me type it in here on this 3GS. The source is going to be the same for iOS 5 and iOS 6. Once that source finishes is adding, you're going to go into this Karen's repo, click all packages. Oops. And the one we want is App Sync Unified. So we'll click that and we will install it. You're going to click OK, I understand. And then click Restart Springboard once that option appears. Notice how much quicker the iPod Touch 3rd Gen is than the 3GS. I believe the CPU actually has a higher clock speed here on the 3rd Gen. But I digress. Next, we're going to add another source. So same thing, you'll click Add. I'll type it in here, but I will post it right there. Pause the video if you need to see that. It's going to be the same source for both of these devices. And once that repo finishes adding, you're going to click on it and it's going to be this one here with the Apple Store icon. Click all packages and the one we want is right here, Vatiris. Click that, click install and confirm. And once again, our third gen did that a little bit faster than the 3GS. All right, and once that finishes, you should see this application on your home screen. If it is missing its icon, that's okay. It will still work, and the icon should appear eventually. So here we go. This is the App Store, essentially, and this is going to allow you to install applications on your device. So you've got a Featured tab which kind of shows you random apps and games every time the app refreshes. You've got categories, so you can click on different categories there of apps and games. And then you have the search function. So that's what we're going to use here. We're going to search for zombies, just like that. Go ahead and do it over here as well. You have to type it correctly. It's not, if you type, let's say you misspelled zombies, it's not going to show you anything. So let's find Call of Duty Zombies. That's what I'm looking for. This is a classic. I bet you guys have played this. You're going to click on Get, and it's going to show you the available versions of the application. Now, a lot of apps are only going to have one version. It depends which one people have uploaded. So we're going to do 1.5. We'll click Done. And here's where you just gotta let your device be. So it's downloading the application. And we'll let it sit there and finish that. Okay, so the iPod finished quite a bit quicker there. If the app has installed, you will see this message and you can click OK. And if we go back to our home screen, there we go, Call of Duty Zombies. So if the application crashes right after launch, it's not gonna work. And if it asks you for an Apple ID, I don't think it's gonna work. Most of these apps will not do that, and they should launch just fine, assuming they're compatible with your device. And our 3GS is done here as well. Show you guys that that's working on here. 
and it is if it makes it this far then it's abs Ooh, it did not work it should work i don't know why it's not but here it is on the uh, ipod touch as you can see there so I'm not sure why it's not working here on the 3gs that's kind of interesting i've had this work on other devices as well might be worth deleting the app and then trying again or just picking a different version there in the app store. But okay, so you guys know how to do that. Use that app store there. The other method of adding applications is a little more involved, but it allows you the freedom of finding applications on the internet that may not be on this store or have a larger file size. For some reason, apps that are over like half a gigabyte don't seem to want to install from this app store. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is find IPA files online. I'm gonna leave links in the description to a lot of really good websites. But essentially what you're gonna do is use a web browser and let's say we want Minecraft. We'll type Minecraft PE. I'm gonna type iOS 6 IPA. You probably don't need to type iOS 6, but it doesn't hurt. So the Internet Archive seems to have a good selection of IPA files. We'll click that. Scroll down over here, you're gonna click Show All. And you're gonna find the file you want, so you kinda have to sort through it. But it's gonna be this one here, Minecraft Pocket Edition. Click on that and it's gonna download. Once that's finished, I like to drag them to my desktop. And if I do a lot of apps, I'll put them in a folder that says to test. And then once I know they work, I'll move them to another folder that'll say like working iOS 5 or working iOS 6. But so let's do this on the 3GS, but the process is the same for the iPod. You're gonna plug in your device and we're gonna go back to that terminal window. And we're gonna open the legacy iOS kit folder. And once again, drag restore.sh into the terminal and click enter. This time we want number four, install IPA. Now, this is only gonna work if you installed that very first Cydia source and the AppSync Unified um, tweak or whatever inside of that source. Otherwise, this process will not work. You have to do that. So we've got number four, we're gonna click enter. Now we have to select our IPA. So we'll type one, click enter. It's gonna open a browser there We'll go to desktop and here's our IPA file. We'll click choose. Now we have to type number two and click enter to install this IPA to our device. And that's it. It's gonna run here in terminal. And once it finishes, we should see Minecraft pop up on the home screen of our 3GS. And while that's working, I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more applications here on the iPod Touch. I'm just gonna go into the feature category and find some random apps here. We'll do Sudoku. I usually try to get the newest version possible. That seems to be more stable. Once again, check out those links in the description for websites that host a bunch of IPA files. That's where you can find a majority of the games for this. Because for example, let's say we want Asphalt, the older racing game. Asphalt 7 Heat. I think this is almost a two gigabyte game. If we try to download it on here, it's gonna begin and then ultimately it's gonna fail. The app's just gonna crash. So in my experience, you have to do that through the computer, through this method here that is allowing us to get Minecraft there on the 3GS. But Minecraft is a really common game and it's not big in file size. So it is also gonna work here on this app store. Version 9, 0.9.5 works pretty well on both these devices. I have tested that out before, and that is downloading there. And while those are working, I will show you this iPad here. This is an iPad second gen, and it is full of apps and games. Most of these have come from the store down here, but I did do some of them from the computer, like Asphalt, Grand Theft Auto, some of the games with bigger file sizes. Another Asphalt there need for speed. But I mean, mo for the most part, these games are working on these devices, which is super cool. 
So we'll put that down and we can see Minecraft has successfully installed and that was actually quite a bit quicker than the computer is able to do there. So you can kind of pick which method you want to use, but in my experience, they've both been decently reliable. And there you go, there's Minecraft. And it has finished here on the 3GS. We'll go ahead and launch that. And this time it's working, unlike Call of Duty. I'm not sure why that didn't work. I've had that be successful in the past. But there you go, Minecraft loaded on that one and we'll wait for our world to finish here on the third gen. And there you go, Minecraft Pocket Edition. Running on the iPod Touch third gen here. It's a little laggy as you can see, but what can you expect with 256 megabytes of RAM? All right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you found this helpful. If you run into any problems, leave a comment down below. I'm sure myself or some other watchers here on YouTube can do their best to assist you. Once again, links in the description for all of this stuff. And if for some reason I forget, leave me a bunch of comments and I will add them. Thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in another video.